What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name's Chris and here we explore products, places, and things that help us live a more enjoyable life. Today we're gonna talk about gravel shoes and I'm gonna run through three different shoes that I think are great. The weather out here continues to be unreal. I mean, for late January, early February, it's incredibly warm. Usually this time of year I'm anchored to the trainer, but it's been so nice that I've been getting out for a handful of group rides out in the morning gravel as well as road, and it's been a total blast and really a nice break from being on the trainer. Let's talk gravel shoes, and I'm gonna focus in on three different pairs that I think are great. The first are the Specialized S-Works Recons, the second are the Specialized S-Works Recon Lace, and the third are the Shimano RX-8s. I've used all these shoes with the exception of the Recon Laces for both cross-country mountain biking as well as gravel riding, so I'll kind of refer to those interchangeably as just call them dirt shoes, if you will. As always with these videos, I don't dive too deep into the tech specs. I think the brand websites do a great job of that. I try to offer my perspective as someone who's maybe a little bit like you. I ride about 7,500 miles a year while still holding down a nine to five job, family obligations, and I don't collect a paycheck for riding a bike. So I like to think of these videos more as a conversation, as if we were on a group ride and you said, hey Chris, what do you think about these shoes or that bike or this particular product? So I hope it comes across as such. So let's start high level. I think all of these shoes are great. I think one is specifically suited for high performance and kind of all around. I think one is really good looking but may have a couple of drawbacks. And then I think there's also a value play within these shoes. The S-Works Recons have been out for about three years now and they've been really favorably received. Most of the reviews that you'll find out there are very positive about these shoes. They are modeled after the S-Works 7 Road shoes, so if you've ever ridden those, you'll feel right at home with the Recons. The sizing, the fit, the feel is very, very similar. They've just beefed up the shoe in a few different areas to prevent them from getting ripped to shreds when you're out on the trail. Aesthetically, I think these shoes look really good. They look just like the S-Works 7 shoe with a little bit of added protection around the toe and additional lugs on the bottom for hike-a-bike situations. I really like the BOA dials on these and I like the way that the cables just kind of cross over your feet. I think it's a really clean look, which I know may not be the biggest deal when you're shopping for a gravel or a mountain bike shoe, but nonetheless, I think the S-Works Recons are a great looking shoe aesthetically. Now, the Recon Laces came out last summer to mostly positive reviews. They have the same look, fit, feel, styling as the traditional Recon, which again is modeled after the S-Works 7. So they look clean. You've just kind of replaced the BOA dials and cables with laces. If you're a fan of laces, I think these should be a strong consideration, especially if you're not riding really, really rough or technical terrain. Aesthetically, the Recon laces are probably my favorite shoe. It has a super clean, simple look. They almost look like a pair of road shoes with laces. In fact, they're almost indistinguishable from the new S-Work 7 lace shoes. And while this may be an unpopular opinion for gravel shoes, I think the laces are actually really, really cool and they're quite functional beyond what I imagined they would be. The Shimano RX-8s are somewhat of a wild card here, but I think they should be a strong consideration, especially if you're not a fan of the big S. Now, aesthetically, I think these shoes are good, not great. The way that the BOA dial kind of crisscrosses and runs around the shoe, down to the toe is not my favorite, and I don't love that Velcro strap, and I don't really love the colors on these. But at the price point, it's really, really hard to complain about these shoes. More on that later. Okay, aesthetics are cool, but let's talk about experience. Now, in each of these shoes, I've logged between 500 and 1,000 miles, primarily on gravel, but also on a bit of mountain bike single track, a little bit of downhill, and a lot just on the local trails as well as ripping up and down and around Mammoth Lakes this last summer. Of all of these shoes, I found the Recon Laces to be the most comfortable of the bunch. These shoes like thrive on mixed terrain long rides. And I think that's a lot due to the laces and just the way that it distributes the pressure across the tops of your feet, eliminating any kind of individual pain or hot spots due to BOA dials or Velcro straps. One of my concerns when buying the Recon laces is that the laces would stretch and that I'd have to stop mid-ride to tighten my shoes. And I can tell you that that's not been the case at all. And I'm used to making kind of micro adjustments with the Recons, and I found that with the Recon lace, I haven't had to do that at all, which has been a huge relief. 
While the Recon laces feel more roomy than the traditional Recons, I never felt my foot slipping out or never had any heel lift, nothing like that at all, which is another issue that I thought I would have with these shoes. And I think it's just due to the way that the shoe is shaped. It really kind of holds your foot in and there's a lot of heel hold in the heel section of the shoe. Performance wise, I feel like these are on par with the traditional Recons. They're fast, they're stiff, they're responsive. They don't really kill your feet. They're not too stiff. And even in hike -a bike situations, I feel like these are just fine for everyday use. While the Recon laces may be the more comfortable shoe, they are definitely the more high maintenance shoe. And yes, some of you may be shaking your head. Why would you get a white pair of shoes to ride gravel? Yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have gotten the black ones, but I still think they're a great looking shoe. They just take a little bit of extra effort to unlace the shoes, to clean them, to clean the laces. It's kind of like the Aries shoe that I talked about in the other video. They're comfortable, they're just a little bit more work. So if you don't like to clean your shoes or you find it to be a pain, the Recon laces may not be right for you. Or if you're gonna get them, you may want to consider a darker pair because the white ones do wipe off easily, but they are just extra work. I think the traditional Recons are probably the best everyday shoe. They're stiff, they're fast, they're responsive, they're incredibly comfortable and they are easy to adjust on the fly. That's one of the things I love about these shoes is that BOA dial is easy to make micro adjustments while you're riding, kind of loosen them up, tighten them. That BOA dial I think is the best BOA dial that's ever been made. I've never had another BOA dial on a pair of shoes that is that easily adjustable. My one complaint about these Recons is the way that the cable crosses over the top of the foot. You see on the tongue of the shoe, there's kind of this lip and the way that the cable goes across the lip, it tends to fall on the side that is closest to your foot. Not really a big deal if you're riding short distances, but as you get to longer distances, I found that that cable kind of digs into your foot a little bit because it's in the thinner part of the tongue. I had the same issue with my s -Work 7 shoes, and I found that the solution is to just cross the BOA cable in an X, thus eliminating the cable from hitting that spot of the tongue altogether. The problem is that if you do that for a long time, you end up with a BOA cable that is like kinked and it starts to fray and it just damages the cable. BOA is really good about replacing these things so it's not that big of a deal, but it is a consideration if you're thinking about getting the recons. I also saw some new shots of the S-Works 8 shoe today and it looks like they've added something to the tongue to keep the BOA cable in place, thus preventing it from sliding up to that thinner part of the tongue and eliminating any issues that you might have. So look forward to that because I'm sure whatever is in that S-Works 8 shoe is going to trickle down into the Recon when that comes out shortly after. Last, let's talk about the Shimano RX-8s. And these are a shoe that really surprised me. They're fairly stiff, although not as stiff as the Recons. They're fairly light and they're incredibly responsive. I think they're a good all around shoe for everyday use. My one complaint about them is that they're hard to get in and out of just based on the way that you put your foot in and pull your foot out. It's not quite as easy as the others. It reminds me a lot of the Physique Infinito X1, which is one of my least favorite shoes of all time. These have a little bit of that exit and entry, which, oh well, it is what it is. The materials are incredibly durable. I've had no issues with shredding or tears or rips. And you know what? I think they're really, really comfortable. And I think that's due to the sole not being quite as stiff. And for hike -a bike situations, having not quite as stiff of a sole actually makes it much, much easier. When it comes to value, I think there's a clear winner here and you probably already know what it is. The traditional Recons come in at $425. The Recon laces come in at $325, $100 less. And then you have the RX-8s that come in at $260. At $260, it's really, really hard to argue anything against the RX-8s. To me, it seems like the RX-8s have the fit and feel and finish of their more expensive brother shoe, the XC9, at a fraction of the price. You see the XC9s come in at $430. I'd also argue that I think the RX-8s have 95% of the features and comfort and stiffness of the Recon and the Recon laces, again, at a fraction of the price. The next best value shoe of the bunch is the Recon lace. For me, it's hard to believe that these are $100 less 
than the traditional recons and they perform nearly as well. And in fact, in some areas, I think they even perform better. Even if you don't like laces, it's hard to argue that the traditional recons are $100 better. I think it could be argued that you can save yourself 100 bucks, go get six months of trainer road, and you'd come out ahead in the end. And of course, if you need to have the best of the best, you need that top tier ultimate race performance, sure, the recons are the way to go. They're a great everyday shoe. They are comfortable with the exception of kind of my gripe about the way the cables cross over the toes and they're just easy to work with, they're easy to clean. They're a tried and true great shoe. Overall, I believe that the value that you get out of a good pair of shoes goes a long, long way. In fact, further than most, if not all upgrades on your bike. If your feet are miserable, it doesn't matter that you have the lightest bike, it doesn't matter that you have the lightest SRAM Red ETAP Axis Group, your feet are still miserable. My advice would be to skip that expensive upgrade and maybe take some of that money and reinvest it in a pair of shoes. Instead of getting that SRAM Red cassette, go get a SRAM Force cassette and take that 150 bucks that you saved and put it towards a good pair of shoes. I promise you, you will not regret it. Which ones am I keeping? Well, I think the Recon laces really complement my riding style, so those are the winner for me. See, I ride a lot of mixed terrain, gravel, with a little bit of mountain biking, and these shoes are perfect for that. I also plan to travel quite a bit with the Crux and bring two wheel sets along, so I'll be using the Crux as kind of like a road bike and gravel bike mix, and I think the Recon laces are gonna be just perfect for all of those adventures. If you're looking for some info on some rad gravel bikes, I'll post the links to my videos about the Crux as well as the Open Upper down below. Those are my thoughts on these gravel, mountain bike, dirt shoes. If you've got any questions, drop me a line on Instagram or a comment below. Until then, 